what sort of things would get into the air if there was a meltdown. I'll just, I've, I've talked about 200 elements, so I'll just do four. One is radioactive iodine. Uh, and it has, it's a beta, emitter, and gamma. Remember I walked you through that? It has a half-life of eight days, which you multiply by 20 to get its total life. It's around for about six weeks. What gland in the body uses iodine? Yes. So if you are trapped in a cloud of radioactive iodine, you inhale it before <coughs> stretching the thyroid, particularly the little children and babies, because their thyroids suck this stuff up like a sponge. And it mutates cells in the thyroid, and later on you can get thyroid cancer. Now I've got a thyroid with nodules in it, and so is my brother. And one day I woke up and thought, my God, I've been exposed to radiation. I moved to Adelaide in 1956, just before the British blew up a huge bomb in Maralinga, and the weather changed and the wind changed and blew this stuff all over Adelaide. And there was a man measuring radioactive iodine in the thyroids of sheep in the Institute of Med and Vet Science, and they were chock a block full of iodine. They never, they prevented him publishing his paper for four years, the Atomic Energy Commission, um, and they never tested the thyroids of humans. So I'm what they call a downwinder. I've been exposed to radioactive materials, and so have many. How many cancers have occurred in Adelaide as a result of those British tests? I don't know. We invited the British here to blow up their bombs because Australia always wanted its own bomb. We thought the British would help us get our own bomb and I think that's still on the agenda. So this only lasts six weeks, but you know um, Three Mile Island that melted down in Pennsylvania? Hershey's Chocolates is 13 miles from there. That's where all the crowds, cars graves to make the milk. The milk was so full of iodine after the accident, they powdered the milk so the iodine would decay away in six weeks. But other stuff got out too. Don't eat Hershey chocolates either. Do you eat M&Ms? We should be making our own chocolates anyway. Pegs and Daryl Lee and stuff. Okay, so the next one is strontium-90. For the older people in the audience, you will have remembered strontium-90 because that was falling out all over the Northern Hemisphere years ago when British, the British and the Americans and Russians were blowing up bombs in the atmosphere. Do, I, do you remember that? You know, and people said, well, this stuff's going to land on the soil and concentrate in the milk, and it goes to bone. So here's your femur, the five of them, right? So if you drink milk with strontium-90 in it, or eat chocolates, it goes to your bone, irradiating a tiny volume of cells, where it can mutate a cell that can cause a bone cancer, or mutate a cell which is a white blood cell. And if that becomes malignant, you get millions and trillions of white blood cells which fill the blood up with immature white blood cells. You become very anemic and you die like patients with AIDS because these immature cells can't fight infection, so you die of massive infection. Strontium-90. Um, it has a half-life of 28 years, so it's around for 600 years. So probably a lot of that is lying around the fields where the cows still graze to make the Hershey's chocolates. And I tell people not to eat Hershey's chocolates in America. No one sued me, so therefore I must be right. <laughs> um, I knew the man who was a science advisor to Jack Kennedy, Jerry Wiesner. He was in the Manhattan Project helping to make the bombs. And there are always women outside the White House protesting against the testing of bombs in the atmosphere. And Jax was standing there one day the way he used to with his hands behind his back looking out the windows at the Oval Office and there was rain falling. And he turned to Jerry and said, you mean, Jerry, there's radiation in that rain? And Jerry said, yes, Mr. President. And that's why Jack Kennedy brought about the partial test ban treaty. You couldn't test in the atmosphere, but you could still test on the ground, which was really worse because it was out of sight, out of mind. And America built over time 77,000 nuclear weapons when a thousand can cause nuclear winter and the end of life on Earth. But I'll get into that in a minute. Cesium-137, that's what is all over Europe. Half-life, 30 years, it causes brain cancers, muscle cancers, all sorts of things. It's around for 600 years. That's why you mustn't buy European food and you mustn't particularly buy the Turkish food. Right? That's in my book. Now the last one I want to talk about is the deadliest and it's called plutonium. Ugh. You boys over there, who is Pluto? 
Come on. Greek scholar. Who? A Greek scholar. He was a Greek god. You're nearly right. He was the god of the underworld. Pluto. Not the dog, you know? The Disney dog, Pluto. <laughs> anyway, plutonium um, is the deadly substance on Earth, such that a millionth of a gram can give you cancer. When they injected it into beagle dogs, they didn't find a dose low enough that didn't give all the dogs cancer. I mean, we didn't, don't even know how dose, low the dose is that will give you cancer. It has a half-life of 24,400 years, so it's around for half a million years. Can't get rid of it. You only need two to three kilos to make a bomb because it's, that's the stuff that fuels the nuclear weapons. Um, and as each reactor makes 200 kilos of it a year, theoretically, you can make a you know, 100 bombs a year if you have a nuclear power plant. That's why people are worried about proliferation of nuclear weapons, because any country that buys out uranium, fissions it and makes plutonium, which they can remove and make bombs. Plutonium is like iron, so it gets into the body and it goes to places where iron is stored, like the liver, where it causes liver cancer. Iron is in the red blood cells, isn't it? In hemoglobin. You know when you taste blood, it sort of tastes like iron? Well, it is iron. And so if it gets into the bone where the red blood cells are made, it can cause bone cancer or leukemia. Uh, plutonium is one of the rare ones that actually crosses the placenta and gets into the developing embryo where, like the drug thalidomide that pregnant women took years ago to stop morning sickness, it's got a killer, killer cell that's forming the left half of the brain, or the septum of the heart, or the right arm. So the baby is born deformed. And it also has a predilection for testicles, and it sits next to the little cells that are precursors of the sperm, where it's, a, it's an alpha emitter, where it can damage the genes in the sperm. And so the damaged genes get passed on generation to generation. And if the man gets cremated, the smoke goes out the chimney with the plutonium to pass on to man, to man, to man. So therefore, there's an exponential increase in genetic disease. That's why in the nuclear age, and the age of global warming, um, I was going to say incineration, but uh, what's it called when you when you get incineration? Cremation. Cremation is not indicated because it adds to global warming that spreads the radioactive stuff around. I'm only talking about people who have been exposed, but every male in the northern hemisphere has a minute amount of plutonium in his testicles. Now, testicular cancer is on the increase. And we don't know that genetic disease can sometimes take 20 generations before two genes get together, right? Like cystic fibrosis, to express itself. So we're playing around with random compulsory genetic engineering or damaging of the gene pool forevermore by filling up the, the environment with radioactive waste. Now, each nuclear power plant makes 30 tons of radioactive waste a year, and it's so hot. If you stand next to one fuel rod that comes out of the reactor, half an inch thick and 12 feet long, you get such a dose of gamma radiation, you'll die within days with your hair falling out. You know that guy, Lid Lidvikov, the Russian who died with the polonium? That's how you'll die. Or if you've read On the Beach, that's how people died. And remember, if any of you read On the Beach, my name is It's a horrible death. So, and these are terribly hot, so they're cooled in what they call swimming pools, beside or on the roofs of the reactors, on racks. Cooled. But you see, in water, that continually circulates. And right. if I wanted to produce a meltdown, no, I would just shoot sleep. a hole in the cooling pool. The water runs out and you've got a huge meltdown. And in the cooling pools, there's two to 30 times more radiation than in the reactor itself, which is a thousand Hiroshima bombs. I mean, the whole thing's mad. Now, this waste lasts for half a million years, and they don't know what to do with it. So they found a mountain 